Excellent. So we're going to call this uh, <clears throat> meeting to order. And we will, uh, we have a quorum. Are there any changes to the agenda? Oh, exciting. Uh, so do we have anybody wishing to speak on uh, anything that is not on the agenda? I don't see any hands or anything, so we can move on to our staff introductions. We're gonna have Taylor and uh, Darren talk today. So uh, shall we go with Taylor first? Is he here? Yeah, so yeah. Well, unfortunately, Taylor had a little bit of a, <laughs> a little crisis situation come up with his family. Not, not nothing uh, health concerning, but oh, a good. stuck car somewhere. So uh, Darren, um, why did you start off and maybe Taylor will join us, but we may have to push off Taylor to the next month. Oh, that'd be fine, yeah. Anyway. Sure, uh, happy to go. Hi, everybody. Um, I know I've met some of you. Uh, I know some of you already, so it's nice to see everybody in one place. Um, my name is Darren Schibler. I have joined CCRPC back in November, but I used to be an intern many years ago uh, doing GIS work primarily with Melanie and um, a little bit with Pam. Um, so I my background is in natural resources. I went to UVM uh, from 2010 to 2014, uh, originally from California. So it was a bit of a, I guess, a culture shock, but not really uh, coming to Vermont. Um, and from there, I had a few jobs in more of the natural resources field, but um, kind of got into planning through the Essex Conservation Committee, which then led to uh, the town planner job, partly through CCRPC, and then uh, eventually led, led me back here. Um, so in most of my time as a planner, I've worked as the town planner for Essex, um, doing lots of different things, mostly development review, but trying to get some time to work on housing needs assessments, uh, urban tree um, maintenance and urban forestry, um, other conservation work, uh, what else? Uh, working on the enhanced energy plan, a lot of time spent on merger in the sense of, you know, working on joint efforts that still were worthwhile regardless of the outcome of that. Um, so then eventually got back here to CCRPC because I really enjoy uh, the people. Um, I really enjoy working at this sort of regional level to sort of look at things from a bigger perspective and feeling like I'm making a big difference. So good to see you all and happy to take questions. <laughs> Well, nice to meet you. It's my first time connecting. <laughs> yes, likewise. I had a question. Sure. Can you give us a, a project that you're working on right now, Darren, for instance, and what might be taking up most of your time? Yes. Uh, what I've been working on mostly since I started is housing needs assessments. Um, we are pretty close to done with one for Williston. Uh, and then I'm also working on one for Heinsberg. Uh, mostly routine updates, but also all, you know, important to sort of talk about housing in the context of the moment and how dire everything is, but also there's a lot of really good work happening in both of those municipalities, um, really strong efforts to, to meet the need. I caught Williston. I, I'm afraid I dropped the second city uh, town. Heinsburg. Heinsburg, okay. And do you, when you do the housing needs assessment, do you look at uh, total build out uh, versus what you have existing right now? How do you, how do you go after that? Uh, how, how do you come up with numbers? Yeah, it's uh, not exactly a build out analysis. That's a whole other can of worms, but we are looking a little bit at sort of what exists today, the general trend of what we expect in the future, um, you know, general sense of demand and sort of gives a scale of like, are we talking, you know, do we need tens of units or hundreds of units or thousands of units uh, to, to meet demand? But it's also looking at uh, affordability in the sense of, you know, are you meeting the income um, uh, thresholds for people? Are you folks, you know, stuck out at the bottom? Are you having enough renter housing versus owner housing and the size, you know, the, the number of bedrooms, uh, the context, the support of services, you know, it's a whole, a comprehensive look at everything. Um, but we haven't talked about specific targets for any municipality quite yet, although Williston kind of wanted to go in that direction, trying to sort of put some numbers to it because they have their growth management uh, system that they 
are very prescriptive about. Well, that sounds interesting. So it's a completely separate animal from, say, uh, Heinsberg with their water issue or sewer issue in their core and trying to, uh, that's a build out. Is that correct? And yeah. So you will you come up with some bullet points for the planning commission and or DRB there, uh, the zoning board uh, that they can act upon? Um, so the good news for Heinsberg is that they're kind of already doing a lot of what they should be doing, which is, you know, compact growth planning, uh, water wastewater funding, and uh, making sure that they're um, they have an inclusionary zoning provision. So some of that's affordable. They're doing a lot of great partnerships with nonprofits like Champlain Housing Trust and Cathedral Square. So um, still working on what else they could be doing. But um, yeah, generally looking at, um, you know, a lot more of the same. It's it's the same story everywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Those are great questions. <laughs> they apply to a lot of communities. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, seeing none, thank you very much, Darren, and uh, welcome to the CCRPC then. Uh, next is the consent uh, agenda. Hey, Catherine, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, Taylor is here now. Oh, Taylor's here. Great. Sorry, folks, I, I wasn't here. I didn't here. see him come in. Yeah. I wasn't here. My wife got stuck in a car wash. Uh, the car died with my two under five children in the back. Uh, so I had to go deal with that. In but a I'm car here. wash. In oh. a car wash with a Nissan Leaf, an electric car, which is only two years old. So it's now oh. at the shop. We'll figure out what's wrong. But uh, yeah, sorry. I was late because of that. Uh, <laughs> well, with little kids, you got to do things fast. <laughs> got to do things fast. Hungry little kids. So uh, I'm Taylor Newton. I'm the planning program manager here. Took over for Regina in September. Uh, prior to that, I was senior planner here for a few years. Um, I think I am the only staff member who grew up in Chittenden County. I grew up in Colchester. Um, Jackie Murphy is not here, but I grew up with Jackie's daughters. And Jackie actually was the admissions counselor at St. Michael's College that let me in, which thanks, Jackie. Uh, so I, I went to St. Mike's. I went, uh, got a master's degree at University of Iowa in uh, urban regional planning after that. Um, I worked for a time as an AmeriCorps VISTA uh, member at the city of Montpelier planning department, worked a little bit uh, for VTRANS doing some temp work, some field work for them. Uh, and then I worked in the town of Milton for three years as uh, zoning administrator, town planner. I was also a health officer, service officer, you know, one coordinator. Uh, really great experience working in Milton. Uh, Milton is, is a place where a lot of planners go and train up. Uh, Thank After you. Chuck, it was great. I really, I really enjoyed working up in Milton. It's, Sorry, it's a, I didn't get to work with you. No, uh, you, you might soon. I'm working on a project there uh, this next year, so we can talk about that. Super. Um, I worked at Northwest Regional Planning Commission after that for six years uh, uh, as a planner, senior planner. So when I moved to CCRBC, it was pretty much the same job, just in a more urban context. Um, in terms of a project I'm working on, Chris, I, I, you know, I've been working on the SEDS, which we'll talk about tonight. Um, you know, as a, as a manager, I'm learning a lot about how the UPWP and budget are coming together. So that's been a, a big learning curve for me uh, over the last couple months. Uh, and I'm still keeping my my fingers in land use planning a bit. Uh, the Milton project I'll be working on, actually doing. Uh, RFP right now for Milton to select a consultant uh, for a downtown core charrette project that we'll be doing, uh, hopefully starting this summer and the next fall, mm -hmm. uh, to do a master plan essentially for the downtown core. And that'll lead into hopefully a zoning project after that. Uh, so yeah, I, I dabble mostly in land use and energy planning, but can can also work on, on a whole bunch of other issues. So any questions for me? Well, this is interesting. Any questions? Oh, okay. Uh, well, thank you, Taylor. We'll get you later I, then, I guess. I, I didn't want to let him off the hook. Even oh, though. okay, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, how how valuable do you find the charrettes, uh, Taylor? In other words, it seems like part of the public participation <laughs> process. But uh, in the long run, are you really just getting a small group of folks uh, visioning, you know, going at maps with Sharpies and, uh, you know, having pie in the sky uh, approaches to things, or is it more directed? Uh, do you actually know the answer before you really come in there and hand everybody a Sharpie? 
I, I don't think so. Um, you know, um, I've never led a charrette. I'm typically the the staff person who's managing the consultant who's doing the charrette. Um, and so I might be helping them with some sort of like subgroups or um, you know, helping with engagement in some way. But um, I find the engagement or the charrette process really important, Chris, because I think um, it's a good way to break the public down into really small groups and have the public actually talk to themselves and work out ideas amongst themselves. Um, I think it's a good way to get a lot of ideas very quickly. I think that really worked really well in uh, Williston during Taft Corners form based code project, for instance. Um, and that was digital too. That wasn't even in person. Um, I like that charrettes are really intensive over a very short window. So there isn't a lot of time to overthink. It's a lot of time to just talk to people and well, mostly listen to people uh, and gather ideas from a really broad set of folks. Obviously, how many people, how many folks show up at the table is really contingent upon how much time you, you prep and what sort of, you know, outreach you're doing. Um, and, you know, I think CCRPC can always help with that, but it's always great to work with a municipality and municipal staff that are really good at that and know who to talk to and what sort of groups that typically are at the table so we can make sure that we get them to the table during a shroud process. Great. Thank you, because I think it's important uh, when we're talking about, you know, our efforts with uh, equity in trying to get uh, representation from uh, the people who can um, perhaps not have been at the table yeah. that, you know, and I'm hopeful that, you know, the, um, the end result of a charrette isn't necessarily written in concrete, um, as I often imagine it is. Uh, and I think the people at the charrettes imagine it is. So uh, I don't know the answer to that, but thank you. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, um, uh, it, it is true, but sometimes the threats can be a lot of high in the sky and people really buy into an idea, but then it's really difficult to make it happen as we're finding with the uh, Riverside. Um, number four is the consent agenda, the TIP amendment, which was in your packet. Do we have a motion to uh, Accept the consent uh, agenda, uh, tip amendment. This is Andy. Move to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second, Mike. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. All those in favor, raise your hands. <laughs> All righty. Looks like the motion passes. Um, any uh, abstentions? Any nays? All right, the motion um, is approved. Uh, <clears throat> now, next is the uh, minutes for uh, uh, the tip amendment that was done uh, via email. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I missed the uh, motion and the approval on that previous. Uh, Andy uh, moved and Benjamin uh, uh, seconded. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, then, would be the um, the minutes of February eighth, which was a the, the online. I, I move approval with Catherine's edits. Thank you. Do we have a second? That's Jeff, Amy. Yeah. I'll second that. Chris Shaw. Are there any uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, changes to the the minutes? If not, um, everybody raise your hands to accept the minutes. And it certainly looks good. Any abstentions? Uh, no, uh, any nays? So you've got it all, a Amy? All right, next is the minutes of January 18th, 2023. Do we have a motion to accept those? Point of information. Yeah. I thought we just did that. No, that's the we had a, the minutes. Um, there were minutes from the tip amendment that, mm -hmm. that was all done online, so that you know that that there's a record that we had voted on uh, proving that one tip uh, um, um, by a consent agenda, and then January 18th was number six on the agenda. 
Uh, this is Garrett. I need to remove my vote since that was purely MPO. Oh, that's true. Sorry, Mark. Sorry, Garrett. But you're I, I do have a question, uh, a request perhaps for a clarification on the minutes for uh, for January. For January uh, the, or, or the February? Yes. Okay. Uh, for Jan uh, January. Okay. Yeah, so on uh, page six, Mm -hmm. um, it's item number eight, uh, which was the uh, had to do with the uh, active uh, transportation plan approval. Um, mm -hmm. But it's on page six, uh, lines 39 through 48, specifically line 43. Um, it meant it's it was about uh, a point that I believe Brad brought up about uh, from Underhill brought up about the access or use condition of REPA, uh, REPA trail. Um, yeah. it's, it's right on the border from it's the last 238 feet of Repa Road becomes Repa Trail to the boundary with um, Westford, the town line with Westford and Underhill, and then it becomes Goodrich Trail. Um, it's uh, the clarification I'd like to make. It reads um, that I stated this is a town trail for Westford and there's access, although he agreed with Brad, very rugged, that's all fine. Um, it's the Westford is interested in this as well, for sure but the select board has a court order for access. Um, it's rather that, um, um, that, that there is a final uh, court order requiring the towns of Underhill and Westford to allow access um, to pro property owners for all uses and that uh, those rights uh, run with the land for their heirs, successors and signs. It's a little technical, but um, it's after years of involvement and hashing things out. Um, so it, just to make sure that it's clear, it's not just that the town has a court order. It's actually that the towns, Underhill and Westford, are subject to a court order, a stipulated court order, which is a final uh, judgment. Thank you, Ben. Ben, can you email me that? And I will get that in the final I would love minute. to. Thank I you would so love much. To. Thank yeah, you I mean, that's, that's a real, uh, um, it, it, um, other than my usual little technical kind of things, that, I mean, that's a real you change. Couldn't possibly, you couldn't possibly <laughs> know about all the history. It, there's yeah. decades. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Did we have a second on that? Uh, Did I don't we have a motion? We, we, we haven't uh, we, had a motion yet. I thought Jeff had, you know, motioned because, you know, yes, I, no, he I, thought he was the other one. <laughs> yes, I, 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 Jeff, did you not motion here on the second round of minutes? I did meeting? not. You did not. No. That's what I thought. Yes. Okay. No one has moved yet. But I well, will, move, I will move it if you want me to. I, I don't. I will move to. approval of the <laughs> January. Uh, January 18, 2023 CCRPC minutes with Catherine's edits. And and actually, ben Benjamin's, had a great one. <laughs> and Benjamin's <laughs> augmentation. Thank you. Do you do want to second it, second. Chris? <laughs> I'll second that. Are there any other um, comments, questions, um, things like that on it? Uh, <clears throat> I just had a dumb one. I mean, it's really, as I said, very technical. Page four, uh, line 15. Uh, <clears throat> the It talks about the federal raise grant. That that one is not in um, capitals where the other one is, so it just need to be consistent. Like I said, very technical, not not as important as a, a real change of things. So, are there any other changes, uh, uh, comments, uh, things? Well, if then uh, uh, everyone who um, wants to approve the minutes with edits, uh, raise your hand. All righty, got that, Amy. Uh, are there any uh, abstentions? No, oh, got Garrett. Garrett. Maybe um, did that just to test you, Madam Chair. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I don't remember to do that, even after two years of doing this. <laughs> uh, all righty, thank you for the, the vote. Uh, moving on, we're going to spend time with um, the West Central Vermont Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy or our uh, SEDS uh, information. So I guess Taylor goes to you. It does. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen. One second.
All right. So tonight we're going to fully debrief the West Central Vermont Sets Project. Um, and at the end of this presentation, I'll ask for a motion on a resolution to adopt the West Central Vermont Sets. So we'll talk about what the partnership is, who the sets partners are. We'll talk about the actual final sets itself in terms of key findings and uh, our goals and actions that come out of that plan. And then again, we'll, we'll talk about the resolution. Uh, West Central Vermont, it's a, it's a new geography. This isn't a geography that typically works together. Uh, it's made out of four subregions, Addison County, Central Vermont, Chittenden County, and Rutland County, 90 municipalities, about half the state's population. Uh, in the past, Chittenden County has adopted its own SEDS, uh, but this time around, we were encouraged by EDA to work with the three other subregions to adopt a, a SEDS together and possibly pursue creating an economic development district in the future. Um, an economic development district can only be created if there's more than one subregion involved or, um, or that has adopted the SEDS. Um, and so we, we decided to pursue this alternative path uh, compared to what we've done in the past. Um, and I think it's uh, resulted in a, in a pretty good product. Uh, work to date, uh, we did a lot of engagement over the course of two plus years uh, of writing this, writing the SEDS. Uh, we held some public workshops. We held some focus groups with specific communities, uh, most notably members of the BIPOC business community. Uh, did that uh, in cooperation with Vermont Professionals of Color Network, uh, notably this past summer. Uh, we did an employer survey using uh, the networks available to us through our, our regional development corporation partners, uh, Greater Burlington Industrial Corporation being our, our partner here in Chittenden County. Uh, we also did work to create an economic profile for the region. That's uh, one of the appendices of, of the SEDS, um, and that is just a full data dump uh, of demographic information, uh, information related to uh, jobs, uh, related to wages, uh, related to home ownership, uh, related to child care. Um, it's a hundred plus uh, page document. And we did it in the beginning of this process to really understand the context, the economic context of the region. Uh, we're also required by EDA uh, within the SEDS to do a traditional SWOT analysis of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And we also decided to do a SOAR which is uh, strengths, opportunities, aspirations, and results. Um, and that really helped us develop kind of data indicators, which we'll talk about in a little bit uh, within the sets itself. Measures by which we can, we can measure how successful or unsuccessful we are being in terms of economic development here in West Central Vermont. Um, we developed a draft sets that was available back in June, uh, made some revisions, uh, had a second draft available in November. During the course of this project, we also uh, have been working on bylaws in case the partners decide to be an economic development district. Um, so it's another deliverable that'll be uh, forthcoming that you guys will see um, if we pursue this option later this summer and next fall. And of course, we completed a final SEDS uh, on February 1st. Key findings. I think you guys already reviewed these key findings with Regina back in July, so I'll, I'll move relatively quickly. Um, but you know, as you can imagine, looking at that map, you know, West Central Vermont um, is is kind of the economic heart of the state, uh, with Chittenden County really being the center of of economic activity and population and population growth. Um, I believe not only half the population, but I believe well over half of state GDP within our geography. Um, it is also the most diverse part of, of Vermont. Um, and in terms of population growth, um, you know, the BIPOC population really accounted for all population growth within this geography uh, between the uh, 2010 and 2020 uh, census. Uh, this region has been greatly impacted as, as the rest of the country by COVID response. Um, you know, we couldn't break down uh, amount of money coming into this geography versus the rest of the state, but um, you know, eleven point three billion dollars uh, federal assistance into the state uh, in response to COVID uh, between twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty two. Economic stability is challenged um, by uh, the labor shortage that we all know exists. You know, labor force participation in the state. We we couldn't break that down into the our geography, but. Uh, we know that labor force participation is at its lowest rate in the past 40 years, around 60%. Um, 
we know that this region, um, through some work we did with the UVM Office for Engagement, uh, looking at NAICS code uh, uh, information, we know that our region has high, very high location quotients for um, very specific value added agricultural products and very niche manufacturing. Uh, so we identify that as you know two areas of the economy we can build upon uh, in the future. We know that our region uh, is impacted by economic inequity, like uh, the rest of the state and the rest of the country, but um, particularly the homeownership gap between white residents and BIPOC residents in our geography is greater than that of, of the country. Um, same with educational attainment and, and income, um, and there remains a gender wage gap. Um, and really the key that, that we identified in terms of, of uh, the focus of our SEDs and our implementing our SEDs really should be on infrastructure, um, and specifically in infrastructure, on infrastructure and areas planned for growth. Um, and, you know, sort of those things that are peripheral to more traditional water, wastewater infrastructure, which is, you know, thinking about housing and, and um, essential services like child care as infrastructure. Any questions on key findings before we move on to goals? Okay. We've got six, six main goals. I want to make sure. Six goals, not five. We had five for a long time. Uh, uh, the first goal really is about attracting new workers and expanding the labor force here within the state. Um, and the main focus of that being uh, housing and childcare and really providing security for folks um, in those two arenas for folks to be able to re-enter the workforce. Um, and also some actions related to, to marketing folks from out of state to come to the region, um, which is understandably difficult to do when we have a housing crisis. Our second goal was uh, focused on equity. A lot of the, the uh, actions under that equity goal come from uh, uh, consulting with our EAC and working with Vermont Professionals of Color Network, who reviewed our SEDS. Uh, you know, actions we have is is are, are really focused on making sure that we continue engagement with these communities and underrepresented folks as we implement the SEDS. Um, we need to do continual engagement over the next five year period while the SEDS is valid, um, and that we continue to partner with organizations that operate in this space to make sure that we're fulfilling the needs of, of, of all underrepresented communities. And our focus here was really on women-owned businesses and BIPOC-owned businesses. Uh, we also identify that um, we should have some sort of prioritization for, for trying to fund projects that address equity uh, if we seek any uh, EDA funding in the future, and that we need better data about who we're serving uh, when we do uh, access grant funding and potentially subgrant funds to uh, to businesses. Um, business development and job creation was also very important. Uh, like most said, we identify entrepreneurship as something we need to support. And uh, the RDCs, our RDC partners, were also um, very much focused on this idea of economic gardening. Um, you know, from their perspective, the ideas of landing a big IBM are, are gone, um, you know, and that we should really focus our efforts and our, our time and energy on supporting those businesses that are here and, and helping those businesses grow. Um, and access to capital remains something that um, uh, a lot of businesses in that business survey, um, and especially a lot of BIPOC businesses we uh, uh, engage with, uh, remain a challenge. So trying to lower barriers to, to access capital. Workforce development, um, I'll skip over that really quick. It's in the news enough, but that and employer retention were identified as really important goals. Um, infrastructure and resilience, uh, specific actions related to the transportation network, um, uh, about utilities and about the need for electrification and how that's going to impact our uh, our transmission and our distribution grid. Um, and then a lot of focus, you know, particularly with our, our more rural partners about um, trying to find uses for underutilized sites. And so this could be schools that have closed since merger. Um, this could be you know, older historic buildings that just haven't received the upgrades or, uh, or, or necessary attention in the past few years and trying to recharge and revitalize those sites to uh, strengthen the local economy. Quality of life um, goals mostly related to land use and land use planning and making sure that we uh, grow and areas plan for growth and we have economic development in those areas. And then we also have specific goals or excuse me, specific actions related to agriculture, uh, tourist and forestry those very Vermonty uh, things that we that are important to all of us. Any questions on goals and actions? So uh, I am going to ask you to, to adopt a resolution, but if you are interested in looking at the sets itself, um, it is located at West Central Vermont or uh, West Central VT.org. Uh, in terms of next steps, uh, 
all the partners, so all eight partners, uh, the regional planning commissions and regional development corporations are considering adoption of this document. Um, most of our partners have already adopted. Uh, once everyone has adopted, we'll submit uh, the SEDS to EDA for approval. Um, I'm fairly confident that we're going to be in a place where uh, where we'll be able to, to receive approval. Jeff, you're clapping, or do you have a question? That's a question for when you're done. Okay. Um, we'll close out the grant this summer, and, and then we'll discuss with our partners and, and you folks about the potential for uh, creating an economic development district through an MOU, and then applying to EDA to uh, get that EDD approved. And we can talk more about that in a second if you want. Oh, we're going to talk about that on this slide. Uh, so an economic development district, um, all other parts of Vermont are covered by one, except for this four county region and the two counties down south, which have uh, submitted an application that hasn't been approved yet. But the idea behind creating an EDD is, is a, a few things. One is just continual collaboration with our partners that we've worked this on the SEDS with. And the second uh, thing is really related to funding. You know, um, This EDD could be an entity that could draw, draw down specific EDA funds um, and it may be easier for the EDD to do that than some of our, our partners in terms of their ability to do that. Um, and these three bullets, planning, technical assistance, public works, disaster supplemental are just some examples of different EDA grant programs that are available um, that this EDD could, could uh, apply for. So that's what I have for you this evening. Jeff, you have a question. Yeah, it, it, actually it's two. Um, the first one is, why didn't they encourage us to have Franklin County in the West Central SEDS? They're already in one and they're they're kind of the, the leader of the other uh, EDD, sorry. So yeah, that, that just makes no economic sense because of the commuter relationships between Chittenden County as an employment center and where people live. Um, yeah. and, and we have, I, I doubt we have any relationship with Orange County or, you know, or even Rutland County. So it's disappointing that they encouraged us to do this, but that's just so we can compete for federal funds. Um, yeah, and Jeff, I, I did explore that years ago with EDA and, and frankly with with uh, Northwest RPC also to, you know to see like but they were part of that district and they didn't want to break it up so yeah it's a victim of history there yeah um th then secondly and, and I know I just read this a month ago Taylor I just can't remember mm -hmm. what's the employment concept that you used for looking at the job changes in the location quotients we looked at NACE codes no, no, um, the employment employment survey. There's six of them. Um, is it the American Community Survey you looked at for employment, or was it the jobs by place of work from the labor the Vermont Department of Labor? So, so in terms of of number of jobs per sector, yes, ACS. You know that's employment by where the people live, not by where the jobs are. I'm going to go back to the economic profile and check, Jeff. Yeah, I, I just, it, it, and so my second question is moot because um, I was going to tell you that the Labor Department just up, updated, rebenchmarked all their jobs by place of work survey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that doesn't obviously apply to ACS uh, because that's a, a survey of employed residents, not the number of jobs. So those people can hold multiple jobs and it's by where they live. So somebody could be in Rutland County and hold a job in Bennington yep. County, and they'd be counted as employed in Rutland County. Yep. Let um, me double check on that, because I know we looked at LEH data and we looked at commute patterns, which, you know, there you can look at either place of employment or, uh -huh. or place of residence. Um, so I might be misspeaking because it's been two years since I looked at that. Yeah, I think I looked at it a month ago, and I think it was ACS data. Um, okay. But it, you lose the whole commuter dynamic when you look at people who hold jobs by where they live, you don't really marry it very well with the economy. Yep. So your location quotients are not real location quotients because location quotients are jobs by place of work, not by employed residents generally. But that's okay. It's a, uh, you know, it'll, we're just being able to step up to the plate to, to um, compete for federal funds with this. And there's no, we already established there's no economic sense to it because Franklin County and Chittenden County have been broken up. But the interesting thing is, and for those of you that are, aren't economists, 
the way economists know it's spring, it's not that the days are getting longer and the temperatures are rising, it's that the labor department re-benchmarks the employment data. And the real interesting thing that happened in this re-benchmarking, because they're starting to put the 2000 census into the employment, uh, the uh, employment surveys for the household side, and they're updating, uh, they've been updating all the data. Most of the updates, uh, because they've discovered that there's more jobs in the Vermont economy than they were counting over the last couple of years since the COVID pandemic, has happened outside of Chittenden County, which I thought was fascinating. M more than 95% of the changes, all the upward changes have happened outside of our county. So that hasn't always been the case. And we've been running around talking about how we have two Vermonts, Chittenden County, and then everything outside of Chittenden County and outside of Chittenden County hasn't even come back to 19, uh, 2005 levels. Yeah. So, but uh, there was a little bit more uh, activity outside Chittenden County than they originally counted when they updated the employment by place of work or the jobs by place of work data. That's all. Bridging that uh, Chittenden County versus the rest of the state divide was a challenge during this project, I think. Uh, <clears throat> it's Well, I mean, it's uh, it's always Chittenden County versus the rest yeah. of the state. And everybody's always envious of Chittenden County. And now with the employment rebenchmarking, they don't have to be. Dan? Yes. Um, regarding Jeff's comment about employment as to whether you're working from home or at the uh, employer's facility, with the advent of online people working remotely, how does that work? I'm just thinking there are multiple companies outside the state, people work within the state. How does that play into the numbers? Yeah, um, actually, Dan, I didn't say that it was related to remote working. It's where the jobs are counted, Right. okay? Regardless of where the person who's holding the job lives. So in a remote working situation, if you're counting jobs by place of work, even if that person lives in California, the job is counted at the place of employment if it's in Vermont. And that's where everything gets confusing because if you're doing an analysis based on employed people by where they live, you lose where the job is located. And that doesn't always, that isn't always the most helpful thing for economic development efforts. You really want to know where the jobs are located and where the people who hold the jobs are located. That's why it's so important to have Franklin County with Chittenden County because so many people who hold jobs in Chittenden County live in Franklin County because of the housing issues and the cost issues that we have. So there's nothing really economic about SEDS. It's all about checking all the boxes so you can compete for federal funds to build wastewater treatment plants and roads and things like that. Well, and I, that's I agree with about. you. I agree with you on that. And I'd also say, I mean, it's equally with Franklin County, you could even say upstate New York, across the lake, there are a ton of people that come across that ferry every day to work in Chittenden County. Yeah. A lot, I, but not as many as you would think, Dan. Well, there used to be, I guess, back when- Well, the lake is a pretty significant barrier. Um, Crown Point Bridge, there are a lot of people coming over to Addison County from well, New there, York there, work in there. There are, but it doesn't bear any semblance to the over 10,000 people that come from Franklin County into Chittenden County to work. For sure, it's still significant, though. I can ballpark it. I think it's about a third of Franklin County workers, I believe, come to Chittenden County for work. Huge. Are there any other questions uh, for uh, Taylor before we move to the resolution? Jeff, that's noted for next sets, that data point. I bet you don't hear anything back from even the EDA on it because they don't know the difference. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> shall I read the uh, the resolution, or are you uh, happy just having uh, uh, <clears throat> to vote on it um, because it was in your packet? No need. Thank I'll you. defer to past practice. <laughs> I don't remember either. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, we need to approve this uh, resolution. Uh, I'd move approval and that the, the chair should affix our name to this resolution. Second. Dan Karen, second. Yes. Thank you. All those in favor, raise your hands. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any uh, abstentions or uh, uh, no's? Okay, we're good. Thank you very much. The, the We've adopted the West Central 
uh, Vermont Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy, the SEDS. Thank, Thank you, you folks. Uh, moving on, we have um, the appointment of the Energy Subcommittee to Long Range Planning Committee. And technically, you know, we can ask questions about it or you can make comments, but in the end, it's the chair's job to appoint them. So we have uh, the, it was discussed in the executive committee and um, there were uh, 10 names uh, submitted. I had actually put my name in there as well because I wasn't, because Melanie wasn't sure she was gonna have enough, but fortunately there were 10 and they only need seven. So I'm not there. And on uh, what, um, who is going to be appointed is Jeff Forward from Richmond. He was on the past, he was on the original energy subcommittee member. Keith Epstein from South Burlington. He also was a past energy subcommittee member. Uh, Jim Donovan of Charlotte uh, was uh, uh, also a post, uh, past energy subcommittee member. And then we have some new ones. Um, Daniel uh, Parkins from Essex. Uh, Henry Bonger, bon Bonges, sorry, uh, from Milton. And Dwight DeCoster from Underhill. And Kevin Thorley from Williston. And, Dwight's a great one to be on because he's impacted by uh, <clears throat> the labor shortages and everything else because he's director of CVOEO and doing all kinds of weatherization for um, um, homes. And so I, the, the uh, board just- Madam Chair, I'd move approval of the slate as presented. Thank you. Jeff. Garrett seconded. Uh, all those in favor will just raise your hands in support of it. Thank you very much. We now have a new energy subcommittee. Next, oh, no wonder I couldn't read. I had the wrong glasses on. I had the long glasses, not the short glasses. Um, next is the uh, charge the board development committee. How exciting for the FY24 nominations. And Mike O'Brien is chair of that. And so we pass it on to Mike that he uh, will work to um, get nominations for next year's um, uh, 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 officers for the uh, RPC. And Questions just to remind Madam Chair or, or my, and Mike, is, is, it, is Andy Montreal now off this committee? Uh, yes. He's, yes, he's back I on the committee. Bummer. Yeah. The torture <laughs> ends, Andy. Yeah, yeah, because Mike and Brian will be chair, and then it's you, I, and I think Dan signed up for it. Yeah, and Catherine. Yep. Um, Andy uh, did volunteer at the September meeting to join, rejoin oh, the committee. So he's also he's the fifth member of the committee. So yeah, and Dan had also uh, stepped up, didn't he? I, I thought yeah. I remembered Dan. Yes. Yeah. So. Now you're correct. Yeah, it's Mike, Dan. Uh, you, Catherine, Jeff, and Andy Montreal. Yeah, I've been there forever. <laughs> just like Jeff. <laughs> it just feels that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Next is our Andy. Andy, we're still hoping that uh, I shouldn't say we're hoping. Just, <laughs> just stay on board. So if if Catherine decides to walk away, I'll walk away. So you can be the immediate past chair again. Well, I'm, I'm <laughs> There is always a good thing. I could be the immediate, immediate past chair. I mean, all kidding aside, this is a very important committee because this is the farm team for the yep. board and for the officers. Okay. Yep. So this is, we joke about it, folks, but it's not a laughing matter. This is for the leadership for this committee, um, for this uh, organization. So we take it very seriously. Well, we also talk about uh, what what we need to do in the future for training and right. education uh, for for uh, new and old me members. Although we love torturing Andy. Oh yes, <laughs> Andy just Andy was like the ever ready ever ready bunny. He just kept coming back. <laughs> Are you in a car, Andy? I am in the car. Okay, but I'm not driving. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. That's right. That's terrific. So we have the equity update on the agenda now. Yeah, and apologies from uh, Ann Nelson. Um, she is not feeling well this evening, so I'm going to try to pick up uh, her report and 
and apologies to you because uh, I think I have this report and then I have my report. So I'm apologizing to you in advance of how long I'm going to be talking to you. Um, so equity update, um, just some notes from Ann Nelson. Uh, she's been working on kind of uh, operationalizing the equity advisory committee. Um, they've had the first couple meetings and they're meeting on the fourth Wednesday of every month. So we finally finally have like a permanent uh, meeting schedule for them. That's going well. Um, they're starting to work on the uh, a proposed project in the UPWP. Uh, we'll uh, talk more about that next month when you look at the draft UPWP. There's some work groups starting on very specific pieces um, of our work there. Um, we're kind of doing a network map. And Nelson has a couple of interns on board to help with a community engagement guide and also a residence guide. She's meeting. Um, this is probably the most, maybe the most important bullet point here is she is um, trying to reach out and make contact with individuals in each municipality that are maybe working on equity or just to get a better sense of what's happening with all the towns. Um, and I think that was a, an important part for us to figure out how to be most helpful to the municipalities, uh, which we've talked about before. Um, and then uh, there's some project level work, uh, you know, Winooski Walk, Walk Bike Master Plan, the Battery Street Corridor Study, South Burlington Climate Action Plan, where she's um, engaging there to help with some equity perspective on those projects. Um, I don't know if that raised any questions for anyone. I can do my best to answer. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for the um, updates. Now we go to the chair and executive director's uh, update. I, at the moment, do not have anything. So. <laughs> All right. Um, annual meeting. Um, we talked about this at the executive committee um, and decided that it would be in person again. So uh, Emma is in the process of finding a spot. Um, and we're kind of I don't know, we've kind of fallen into a little bit of pattern of kind of go urban and then rural. So uh, last year we did uh, Hula in Burlington. So we're now looking at some rural sites. So um, just stay tuned. Emma will let everybody know as soon as we land on the uh, location. But um, if you want to make a note in your calendar, is it June 21st, Emma? Yes. Yep. Yeah, June 21st of uh, uh, that evening. Um, yeah, we typically start a little bit earlier, maybe around 530. So um, if you want to kind of reserve that evening in your calendar now, that would be great. Um, any questions on that? Do we get to vote? <laughs> um, like McQuan. <laughs> you may not have a no. location? Uh, yes. Oh, um, that probably I'm is sure it's already booked. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sure it's already booked. <laughs> uh, well, um, it, there's there's kind of a lot of variables. You know, are they available that night? What the cost is and things like that. So that's what I'm, Emma's working I'm, on. I'm, I'm sure the cost is uh, exorbitant, but uh, it's lovely. It's a lot for there for that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure it is. I just thought, you know, coming out of the pandemic, we might have three years worth of uh, backstop to buttress us. <laughs> so it's about a three quarter mile drive for me. So I'll vote for it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go to Catamount again. Then we can play golf too. We yeah. could do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. It's, so the longest, it's the longest day of the year. We don't want to be inside. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Especially if it's nice. Oh, in fact, um, the sun is starting to come out. So that's yeah. So anyway, stay tuned for that. She's uh, she's a master at figuring it out. So uh, thank you, Emma, for that work. Um, the um, second quarter financial report. Um, I'm, I don't know how well you were able to see the giant spreadsheet in your packet. I'm hoping you were able to zoom in and blow it up. But um, we really just wanted to uh, have that available to you and you know, let us know if you have any questions. I'll. Sorry, I'm scrolling to the bottom it's line. It's good. It's good, Sorry. folks. It's good. Yeah, we're pretty much uh, at a balanced budget place right now. Um, and so we're, we're. you'll see the bottom line, if you look at row 112, you'll see $0 is where we are in terms of net position right now. 
Um, but we usually have a better second half of the year than we do the first half, uh, just because there's fewer vacations and holidays in this uh, this half of the year. So um, any questions, to, and I'm not gonna go row by row unless you ask me to, but any questions that the budget report raises for you or things that you might wanna know more about? I don't see any hands raised, okay. Um, UPWP, um, we're on track. The UPWP committee is gonna have their third and hopefully final meeting on the FY24 draft work program at the, uh, is it uh, March 30th, Marshall? Or 29th? We did change it. Let me just double check what that date was. Yeah, uh, it's not necessarily important, but they're meeting the last week of March. The 29th. Um, 29th, thanks. Um, and so there should be a draft UPWP, you know, getting to the executive committee in April and we'll review it at the board meeting also. Um, so, you know, we've uh, had a good amount of transportation planning funds, the PL, MPO funds um, have been increasing with the infrastructure bill over the last couple of years. So we're in decent shape, um, but there's also, it means there's, more money, that also means there's more work. Um, we're still digesting um, how, or we, we're trying to confirm that we can actually handle all of the work as a staff. Um, so we just went through an exercise in the last few days of like entering all of our hours for the whole year and seeing how it plays out. Um, we'll know a lot more about how it plays out next week. Um, so stay tuned. Um, and then legislative update, um, there's, uh, as always, a lot of things going on uh, in Montpelier. Uh, I will tell you, my attention has been pretty focused on two uh, major things for RPCs. Um, and so, and I hate to be crass, but one of them is just about our funding. Um, so, yeah, there is still conversations in different committee rooms and different bills about RPCs helping with this and helping with that. Uh, you know, natural resources, energy, equity. Um, just more think housing. Um, and so we do have a request into the House Appropriations Committee to further increase our regional planning funds. Um, so I'll let you know, you know, how that goes next month in the House. I think um, they're probably going to be voting on it in the next week or two. Um, and then we'll see what the Senate thinks uh, later, later in the session. Um, so that's just kind of an RPC money thing. Um, the other big bill that we've been tracking and had uh, more engagement with is S-100, uh, the housing bill that uh, Senator Rahm Hinsdale worked on, and that got voted out of Senate Economic Development and Housing no, two weeks ago, maybe now. Um, it's just got voted out of Senate Natural Resources today. Um, there are some changes that that committee made. Um, and I'm still hopeful that uh, something happens to address the housing crisis. Um, not sure if it's all the right pieces yet, but uh, please let me know if you have any particular thoughts. Um, I know VLCT just sent out a press release pretty unhappy with the changes that the natural resources made today in the Senate. Um, and so that's not going to make crossover then. Um, it's, um, it's, I think it's kind of getting some special dispensation, Jeff, uh, just cause everybody. The tax to the big bill or something like that. Okay. It, it, it's going to be its own bill, but there's, uh, oh, just okay. because it's such a big priority, I think they've said, okay, you can get another week or something. Um, there's also a lot of money attached to it. Um, a lot of, um, policy changes around permitting more focused on the municipal side of permitting in this bill. Um, and there's been a lot of discussion in the legislature about waiting for some Act 250 studies to get done that are supposed to get done this December before they tackle more substantive Act 250 changes in the 24 session. So anyway, that's a quick update. Uh, I don't know if it, that raised any questions or people have comments on other things that maybe I should be paying closer attention to that I'm not.
Well, you guys are really being nice tonight. Thank you. Yeah, no questions. Uh, <clears throat> well, if there are, and you've gone through the, the whole list of uh, uh, executive director's updates. So we're going to uh, number 12, which is the standard, the, the, the committee and liaison activities and reports are either by link uh, or in your packet, however you choose to do so, which brings us to the end. Unless there's something somebody wants to talk about. I move, I move we adjourn. I'll second that. Yeah. Well, all those in favor say aye, or they actually raise your hands. I think the motion passed. Amy, Thank that you. was me making the yeah. motion in case you didn't remember. Or yeah. And you, you can pick between, I think, Garrett and yeah. myself. Oh, there is a <laughs> question at the moment. Uh, you're uh, muted, Miles. Oh. Yeah, my hand was up because I didn't, I was on a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> he was approving adjournment. He's He's approving adjournment. Ah, I, that's, I gotta pay attention to, I gotta focus on which, which is which. <laughs> Thank you very much, all. Uh, Good night.